So because making heat maps are pretty fun, let's do something similar with the 10-year Japanese study. The study titled, quote, Long-Term 10-Year Efficacy of Finasteride in 523 Japanese Men with Androgenetic Alopecia, unquote, by Masayuki Yanagisawa and colleagues, presents a thorough evaluation of finasteride over a decade. Here, the first heat map we're looking at is the yearly modified global photographic assessment scores that the researchers gave to individuals in this particular study. So it goes from year zero, the start of the study, up to year 10, and you can see what scores the researchers gave uh, individuals in different ORD classes. Now, the researchers give a score starting with zero, essentially being baseline. One being significant disease progression, so that means the hair loss got worse. Two being moderate disease progression, so that means the hair loss is slowing down, but still progressing somewhat. Three being slight degree progression, so it's significantly, like, kind of, it's still progressing, but it's barely progressing. Four being no change at all, so stable. Five being a slight improvement in hair, six being a moderate improvement in hair, and seven being a significant improvement in hair. These are the scores that the researchers gave, and this is how we're going to conceptualize this heat map. So, looking at the vertical axis, the rows, this represents different Norwood Hamilton scale groups, ranging from one all the way up to seven. These groups are indicative of the severity or stage of hair loss at the first visit, so at year zero, when researchers started the experiment. The horizontal axis, or columns, represents the years from zero to 10. Now, the color scale. The color intensity in each cell indicates the modified global photographic assessment score that we mentioned before that the researchers came up with. Warmer colors, so the more red they are, denotes higher scores, while cooler colors, the more blue or bluer they are, represents lower scores. Each cell value contains the modified global photographic assessment score for a specific Nord Hamilton group at a particular year. The values are means indicating the average modified global photographic assessment score of individuals in that group for that year. From this heat map, we can observe trends. Generally speaking, the modified global photographic assessment scores indicate increasing over time for all groups in this 10-year long-term Japanese finasteride study. Now, some Norwood Hamilton classes had more positive outcomes, and these tended to be, like I mentioned in the beginning of this long video, the Norwood classes 1, 2, and 3 had significant changes to their hair count and quality. beginning of this long video, the Norwood classes 1, 2, and 3 had significant changes to their hair count and quality over time better than the other Norwood classes. So this indicates differences in how various stages of hair loss responds to treatment. So what should you take away from this, right? The sooner you respond to your hair loss, the better outcome you'll get. If you're a Norwood 1 to 3, you'll get a better outcome compared to a Norwood 4 to 7. So next, for our heat mapping, we're going to focus on the mean modified global photographic assessment scores over three specific year ranges. The 1 to 5 year range, the 5 to 10 year range, and the overall 1 to 10 year range. Again, this specific graph that you're looking at right now on the screen pertains to the long-term 10-year efficacy of finasteride in 523 Japanese men with androgenetic alopecia study. Anyway, the vertical axis or rows, again, the different Norwood Hamilton scale groups are displayed. The horizontal axis or columns, this time the columns represent three time ranges the 1 to 5 years, the 5 to 10 years, and the 1 to 10 years. Now, when it comes to the color scale and the cell values, similar to the previous map that we were just looking at, the color intensity and the cell values indicate the mean modified global photographic assessment score for each group over the specified time ranges. Now, this map helps us in understanding the average response over broad time periods, which smooths out year-to-year -year variation, and it also allows us to have a comparison between the first half, the one to five years, and the second half, the five to 10 years of the decade-long period. And this gives us some meaningful insights that shows us whether the effects of the treatment, the finasteride, either strengthen 
weaken or remain consistent over time. The overall decade-long effectiveness of treatment across different stages of hair loss, both heat maps together provide this sort of detailed and nuanced view. Now, when you're looking at the graph itself, as you can see, people with a Norwood Hamilton 1, they typically had good responses, right? Remember, the response scale is from 0 to 7, with 0 being, you know, you didn't get any improvement whatsoever, with 7 being you actually grew hair and you just were a fantastic responder. What you can see is that between the 1 to 5 year mark, you had people have somewhat reasonable hair gains. And those people are mainly in the Norwood 5, I would say, and up. So Norwood 5 to Norwood 1, these people typically had good responses. Now, trending from that time period, going to the 5 to 10 year range, you can see that people who were Norwood 1, Norwood 2, Norwood 3, and even Norwood 4 had some pretty good hair gains. Now, what I thought was particularly interesting was that the people who responded well and were actually getting good results between the five to 10 year mark and the one to five year mark, you can see that a lot of people experienced continual gains between the five and 10 year marks more than their one to five year marks, or at least that was the average scores that each Nord class tended to give. So the mean score in year one to five was lower than the mean score between years five to 10. But hopefully the graph is somewhat self-explanatory. I don't want to belabor the point, but you can see that, yes, scores in terms of positive hair growth markers are trending upwards. So taking a step back, looking at both of these studies, the 10-year finasteride study that Rosie et al. did for the Italian men, as well as the 10-year finasteride study that Masayuki Yanagisawa did for the 523 Japanese men, we see that overall, people in these studies are experiencing changes, positive changes, such that when people reach year 10 of their finasteride treatment, their hair is better than when they started out. And then we see some things like year 5 or the intermediate stage of the treatment, so the halfway mark point, tends to see people either continually improve or stagnate in their hair gains or hair growth. These 10-year long-term finasteride studies show that early response is better than later response, right? So the more proactive you are in addressing your hair loss, the more likely you are to keep your hair. And because we have an example of a Caucasian population, being these Italians, and also an East Asian population, being Japanese, we're seeing, again, the same trend. People have better results at year 10 than they do at year 1. And at year 5 to 10, that is sort of like an intermediary point where people either stagnate or they make continual gains, and a small minority of them see a decline in hair count. Nevertheless, they're still above their baseline where they started out at. So I think that kind of blows a bit of a hole into the whole hyper-responder to the finasteride or dutasteride thing that many people have when it comes to Asians. Because people use the excuse that, well, Asians are hyper-responders, so what's the point of me using finasteride or dutasteride? Which I think that's kind of said in a hyperbolic manner on these online forms. But really, some people excuse finasteride even working or not working as well because they, they'll just say, well, the study you cited uses East Asians, and East Asians just, you know, intrinsically respond better to finasteride. And that's not completely true. When you control for factors such as their Norwood scales and how soon they address their hair loss with finasteride, you'll see that the people who were quicker to act kept their hair longer and were the ones that tended to have greater efficacy. I'll say this. In terms of the visual appearance that some people see on these forms, I'm willing to bet that it's just the, again, the dynamics of Asian hair, it being wide, it being faster in terms of its antigen growth rate, that when these hairs do go back to their original antigen growth cycle, they'll just look aesthetically better than typical long, wavy Caucasian hair, right? The thick, wide hair of Asians, East Asians in particular, kind of fills out 
and just looks, I guess you can say, better, right? When it comes to air growth on finasteride. And another factor being that, like I mentioned earlier in this video, and in case if I cut this up, I'll just mention the factor again, that East Asians do have a slower rate of androgenetic alopecia. So if you don't control for things such as the Norwood class of these androgenetic alopecia treatments, you will have that perceived hyper-responder. But get an Asian Norwood 1 and a white or Caucasian Norwood 1 or an Afro Norwood 1, they'll all tend to respond the same. But yeah, long ass video, a lot of graph reading here and there, but hopefully my message is able to be conveyed properly. And if you guys have any comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys on the next video. Comment green star if you got to the end of this video. Peace out, guys.